Hi, I'm Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to be modeling for you how we're going to be starting flipping the classroom here at Crescent City Junior Senior High School. So today, I'm going to be the teacher, and you guys are going to be the students. So what I want you to do, as, as I'm going through this entire video, is I want you to be taking notes, write out any questions you have as they come up through the video. If you ever need to pause and rewind to catch up on something, you're more than welcome to throughout the entire video. This is you doing it at your own pace. So recently, I went to the FETC Technology Conference, and I went to the seminar that was really cool about doing Flipping the Classroom alternatives for low socioeconomic communities such as we work in. So, some of the alternatives that we have over here is first, we have a jigsaw. So we have some students that can watch the video, and we have some students that can't, depending on their internet access and what goes on in their everyday life. So what you could do is have the students that do watch the videos, they can teach the ones that didn't watch the videos what happened in the videos, so that the ones teaching get a more in-depth look at the content, and the ones that didn't watch it get their first look at the content without feeling left behind because they get taught by someone else. Another thing is if you have stations, one of the stations that the people that were not able to watch the videos due to their income or not having Wi-Fi or internet access, is their first rotation can be to watch the videos, to take notes, to get caught up so they're not left behind when they rotate to the other stations. Another thing you can do is make DVDs or if students have flash drives, you can put the videos on their flash drives so that they're able to watch it at their house without having to have internet access at all. <laughs> Another thing is if you have a big project coming up and you don't want to be having to make videos every day, doing all that stuff, you can just make one video that they have to watch, give them a set time to watch it, like give them a week or two to be able to watch the video so they can watch it on their own time when they have time to do it and the access to do it. And if you give them this deadline to do it, they're more likely to watch it because that'll get them ready and be prepared for the project or whatever assignment you're going to be doing that day based on this video. Another thing is you can show the video a whole class. So they can watch it at home, but if they didn't watch it at home, you can have it playing on a projector or anything like that. And it could be looping and looping and looping throughout the entire class. So students that missed it can watch it the first time, take their notes in class, and the other ones can work. And if the ones that are working are confused about a part, they can look up, look at the video, and watch it until their part they're confused about happens. These alternatives help you flip the classroom in a low socioeconomic society like we have. So, in other words, you give more one-on-one -on -one time because they're able to watch the videos in any of these ways, or at least talk about the videos if we're talking about the jigsaw, so that they're able to understand the content get the one-on-one -on -one time that they could get with the teacher, and they can also work in groups with peer discussions and group projects and everything like that based on whatever content you teach in the video. Now, the videos that you make should be about 10 to 15 minutes. The standard is one and a half minutes for every grade level. So, depending on your grade level, the maximum should be 15 minutes. And the videos cover the content, but they don't go as in-depth as you will when they come to class ready to learn based on what they learned in the videos. So the videos just have a basic overview of everything that the students learned. And in class, that's when they do the in-depth practice, one-on-one -on -one projects, anything that you need to get them to actually understand the content the way the standard wants it to be taught. While students are watching the videos, they can also be taking notes. They can take notes on paper, they can type up their notes, they can do anything they need to do so that they're able to take notes, watch the video, and understand what's going on. Some strategies that you can use, one of them is called WISC. The W stands for watch the videos, the S stands for summarize, and the Q stands for question. So they watch the video, they summarize what they watched, and then they write a question of something they didn't understand or something they want more information about, and they bring it the next day to discuss with their peers or to ask the teacher or anything at the beginning of class. While the video is being made, like I'm doing right now, you can pose questions throughout the video so that they would answer them at home and bring them in to answer in class. Or you can have them write down the questions so that they can think about them and get ready to discuss them the next day in class. Either or, it doesn't really matter. It's your class, you need to do what you need to do. One good thing about chunking the videos into 10 to 15 minute increments 
is because it doesn't just overload them with information. It gives them a short amount of time, a short amount of time to get the information across so you don't overload them and overload their working memories and all that stuff so they actually understand what's going on and they get the content covered before they go in depth. So that's why the videos should be short. So now, your assignment to get ready for our professional development next Thursday, Wednesday, it's on Wednesday, is to think of how you can use any of these alternatives in your classroom for your specific content area and what kind of strategy would you use to make sure that the students watch it and everything like that. One good way to know if flipping the classroom would definitely work is to do a poll in your classes so that students, you can see student interest on if they would like to watch videos and you can also see if what students have and what students don't have internet access at home so that they would have the ability to flip the classroom as often as you would like. So with all these things being said, this is Flipping the Classroom. It's a really basic overview. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me. And we will talk about this more at our professional development next week.